Your support helps us bring you programs you love. Go to wyomingpbs.org, click on support, and become a sustaining member or an annual member. It's easy and secure. Thank you. Perhaps no other voices are as easily recognized in Wyoming as those of Dave Walsh and Kevin McKinney. For decades, one of the great broadcast teams in all of college sports have brought us the sounds of Wyoming Cowboy football and basketball. Their chemistry is admirable. Dave and Kevin, next on Wyoming Chronicle. Funding for this program is made possible in part by the Wyoming Humanities Council, helping Wyoming take a closer look at life through the humanities, thinkwhy.org, and by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support. And it's my pleasure to be in the Wildcatter Suites here at War Memorial Stadium to be joined by Dave Walsh and Kevin McKinney. To both of you, welcome to Wyoming Chronicle. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy to be here. I had to get my calculator out to figure out all these statistics about you two, but let me see if I have them <laughs> have, that I'm close. Dave, you've been calling Wyoming Cowboy football now for 38 seasons. Is, is that right? And you called basketball games for the Cowboys for 37 seasons? 36. 36, yeah. okay. Uh, seasons doing basketball. Yes, this is my 38th year. You're, you're doing, doing Wyoming seasons. You're from, yes. you're a San Diego native. You went to San Diego State University. I did. Uh, right. A lifetime ago, yes, a long time ago. You can't forget <laughs> to throw in the one year, 1997, when you called in the Pioneer League games for the Billings Mustangs. Yes, uh, and that was quite a year. Mustangs won the championship that year, and uh, the thing I remember most about that was just all the bus travel uh, to follow the Mustangs. But uh, when the Mustangs were playing in the finals against Great Falls, Cowboys opened the season at uh, Ohio State. I'd never been to Ohio State, so I flew from Billings, went and did the Ohio State game that year, and then back to Billings to, to finish up the finals. So, uh, yeah, that's a year I'll, I'll never forget, not only because of the Mustangs, but that, you know, playing in the horseshoe and starting off the season, that Cowboy football season was special. As long as Dave has been around this place, Kevin, of course, you've been here even longer. Mm. A native of Cheyenne, you've been um, a part of the University of Wyoming for even longer. Uh, providing color for the Cowboys for 24 seasons, but for the basketball team, even longer. I've had a little trouble nailing it down, but is this be your 49th year? Well, you know, that is, I have a hard time nailing it down because <laughs> I had just started full time here in 72. And so a year later, I started with Gene Benson doing basketball and, and simply because I traveled with the team and he asked if I wouldn't mind helping him. So I talked to Bill Young, who was uh, my boss, and uh, he said, well, yeah. He says, you're not going to be able to do it at home, you know, but we, uh, I don't think anybody would mind if you did it on the road. So I did that with Gene for a few years and then with Larry and, uh, and then with David. How did you two meet? When, when was the first time you guys got to meet? Well, I, I, it was in 80, 1984 when I got the job. I was in Casper for a couple of years doing Wildcatter basketball games. I don't uh, know. I think we might have met, uh, crossed paths and met uh, then. But uh, when, when I got the job in 84 is when, of course, we uh, became close and started working together doing basketball yeah. games together. Um, so I think that's probably when we first got to know really you know I, I, we certainly knew who he was and and uh, when uh, he was hired I remember Dave would come down on Fridays and, and we'd sit at the house and visit and and uh, um, you know I got really got to know each other I think mm -hmm. uh, on those those Friday afternoons and evenings because you would stay here on Friday night would you not I'd come working down. in Casper at the time right yes. working in Casper first two years I did Cowboys 84 and 85 uh, was still living in Casper working in Casper um, but uh, yes I would come down on Friday night do the game I'd usually head right back if the weather was good, you know, back to Casper. Always after, is good in Laramie Day. Uh, yes. Always good weather. <laughs> Never, no, after, not a problem. Well, yeah. you know, and we, we immediately hit it off, obviously. We were doing games together and working together. But our kids, you know, have grown up together. And mm -hmm. so we've, 
uh, we had a pretty close bond for a lot of years. And I think that's one of the most interesting things to me is you guys are not just professional work colleagues. You guys are great friends. I'm, and I'm not under describing that in any, any way, am I? No, I, you know, it's hard to, hard to do this job, I think, if you, if you don't uh, care for the other person, you know. And, and so, yeah, it, it became a great friendship. I think uh, we just have such a tremendous respect for each other. Um, and I, that happened right away. I mean, this is the most talented guy I've ever worked with. Uh, he makes our broadcast so, so good. Um, so uh, that, that, part, that part was easy. We're, uh, and I think we both had the same goal as far as we just wanted to do the best radio we could, you know, and describe the game and, and uh, do good broadcasts, which I think we've done. And, and, but I knew right away that uh, we were going to be pretty close because we had the same kind of passion for the game. And uh, nobody has much passion for the Cowboys, the University of Wyoming, as Kevin McKinney. But uh, I, you know, kind of got caught up in it right from the start. And, and uh, a lot of that was because of, because of this You guy. know, I remember when uh, I first heard his voice. And I'm going, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, that's big time. And uh, I knew that he was going to make us big time because I didn't work with him in football at the beginning. It was just basketball. But uh, I'll never forget that, uh, being so impressed just with the voice alone before I even really knew him. And uh, that was, uh, I, I, I thought, you know what, we've got ourselves a big time guy. Dave, you studied sports broadcasting at San Diego State? I did. Why the interest? What, what got you going early on? You know, I, I knew at a very early age that this is what I wanted to do when I grew up. So who you was know? your mentor early? Who did, you, who did you like to listen to on those I those fell nights? asleep as a young lad. I had the transistor on my nice. pillow. I'd nice. fall asleep at night listening to Vin Scully nice. do Dodger games and Chick Hearn doing uh, L.A. Lakers games. So those are the two that I uh, remember and there were some local uh, broadcasters. Al Coupe was one in San Diego back then that was doing San Diego State. And uh, Keith Jackson was, uh, was big back then in college, doing sure. college football. And, of course, uh, now that the, I mentioned those first two guys, they were radio guys. But I was so into sports and athletics that I uh, watched a lot of TV. And my first really idol was Kurt Gowdy. Wow. You know, he was uh, doing the AFL games and of course, San Diego AFL team and uh, was a big fan of the Chargers back then. And, uh, but those are the people that I, that I listened to and, and grew up listening to. But I was very young. I was eight, nine years old when I knew, you know, listening was going to fall. Uh, I, I would love to do that. Actually had the chance to, and when I was in junior high school, uh, played on the junior high school Chula Vista junior high basketball team. And uh, I had injured my knee. And we played back in those days, played outdoors. You know, played on a cement, the junior high in Southern California played outdoors on a cement slab. And uh, I, they, had a, they had speakers set up for a PA person. Well, I'd hurt my knee and I couldn't play. So they said, why don't you, uh, why don't you do the PA and, and just uh, do as much as you want? And here I am, you know, in junior <laughs> high school, I think I was 15, 14. And, and uh, I started doing Play by play. Love to hear Dave about that, Dave. <laughs> well, be great. you know, and the thing is, uh, the, uh, the people loved it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was kind of the first uh, inkling that I knew, you know, I, I think I can do this, but that's what I want to do. We're going to talk about present day college issues here in a little bit, but to use a metaphor, both of you could have maybe entered the transfer portal and went elsewhere, <laughs> but neither one of you have. Kevin, you've stayed here. You've stayed well, in Laramie a long time. You know, it's, it's my home. And uh, I, I had a couple opportunities, almost went to Iowa State once. Uh, um, Erickson, Dennis Erickson wanted me to come to uh, Florida, uh, which I knew I wasn't going to do that. I had a young child and I wasn't going to take him down there. But I did take a job at the Western Athletic Conference in the conference office. Uh, went and interviewed and, and they offered me the job. and. You know, I took it, so I, I came back, and Gary Was Cunningham, that in Denver at the that time? That was in Denver, mm -hmm. yeah. And Gary Cunningham was our athletics director, and he says, what did they offer you, and I'll match it. So he did, and I had to call Joe Kearney, who was the uh, uh, commissioner, and, and turn it down. But I, once I got through that, 
you know, I, I wanted to stay here. It, it, it was a different world then in, in terms of you wanted to have longevity in your job. You didn't want to move around. And, and in my business, which was sports information, you needed the, uh, the I think, the, the, the respect of, of the media. Uh, they, they wanted somebody who they felt like was telling the truth to them. And, and so that's what we did. We stayed. And, and many of the guys in the league who were very good friends of mine, uh, they all stayed as well. So we had guys that were uh, around their schools as long as I was here. So um, I never did think about it after that. Tell me if I have this progression right, Dave. Larry Berleffi, Gary Gallup, Mike Nolan, and then you. Is that how play-by-play -play announcers have worked across the way here at War Memorial Stadium for I, football? I think so. I think uh, Ray Lansing actually did. Ray a Lansing game did one year. year. One yeah, year. Yeah. So Ray Lansing was in that mix right before uh, I was hired in '84. But okay. uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty good bunch there. And I had the opportunity, of course, to work with Larry. Uh, his for the last many years that that he was on the air, um, w which was fantastic. But uh, yeah, that's. That's pretty much yeah, the, know, the line there. Yeah. Here, here was Larry doing it for 42 or 43 years. And then we had these guys for, you know, a little bit of time. And here comes Dave to do it 38 more years. And uh, it, it's, uh, Wyoming's very fortunate uh, very because fortunate. I think a lot of places have that progression that you mentioned where guys aren't there very long. And, and you're, you're really lucky when you have that voice. All right, take us around the country now. <laughs> Best place to call a game on a on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening is mm. where? Well, besides well, here. Now, oh, other than, yeah, well, be, other besides than here. Okay. Besides here. <laughs> what what has been the place that you've walked into and have just looked around the place and just just thought, oh my, this is something. Well, there's there's quite a few. Sure. Really, um, you know, I think of places like. Uh, Tennessee, where yeah. there's 107,000, and I'll never forget looking before we went on the air, looking at the back of the booth right there on Peyton Manning Way, and seeing you know 20,000 fans form a, an aisle for those players to walk down. So just uh, I think that's a that's a great place. We've we've done games at Florida. I think they've got a pretty, and I'm I'm talking about some big big stadiums. Texas A&M is quite a quite a sight. Uh, now I must Wealth say that man, all that stuff. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. they'll join. You know that whole crowd will join arms and do this rocking. Gives thing. you a motion sickness, doesn't it? And you can literally you can feel, feel the, the, yeah. the oh, you can feel the booth moving under mm -hmm. you. It's a, it's a, those are those are some great places. Uh, Kevin, what's on? Your well, you know, list I would there? say that A and M was the 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 most fantastic place I, we've been. And as Dave said, we've been to Tennessee and Georgia and Florida, and uh, but the. Just the atmosphere of a and m and the holding uh, arm in arm and all the things they did that was tradition uh throwback type things. I think that was fabulous. I really enjoyed uh nashville we We had a game in Nashville against yeah, Tennessee, yeah. and that was a pro stadium now and uh, the the location of it uh, and the way they handled things. I think for our business, for what yeah. we do, they were just fantastic. I, I enjoyed the Death Star here last year yeah. at, in, in Vegas, mm -hmm. the, the, the new, new Raiders stadium. Yeah. stadium. That was quite quite the place. But for tradition, you know, um, we've played at Texas, and I, I was impressed with that for sure. But A&M was just something special that I, I and all these other places that we mentioned they're all big time sure. and, and uh, you know they're exciting to be in it was as exciting for us as it was for the players sure. to be there really I mean you know the horseshoe at Ohio State that's a there's a, we could go on and on yeah. because the Cowboys have gone to some amazing places and played now I will say this uh, even at, at A&M and Tennessee as far as doing a broadcast not that easy because you're up so high that the field is not large. Yeah. No. <laughs> so you do you do most of the game on binoculars, which mm -hmm. you know, I, I prefer being able to set the lineup and then taking my binoculars down, and calling the play. But uh, you couldn't do that there. We also did a basketball game when Wyoming uh, played in the NCAA's, went to the Sweet 16, and played a basketball game in the old Seattle Kingdome. Oh wow! And yeah, we were literally. 
way up there, and that court was that was bad. You know, that was about that big, and it was doing a basketball game. So uh, we've done a few of those, but uh, you know, and you know, you, you there's no place like the like North Carolina to do a yeah. basketball game there, or you know, we uh, the big time Kentucky places or, are yeah. big time. Yeah. There's yeah. no doubt. I think it was Rice Dave. We went went in the press box was almost over the court. Uh, we, we were looking down, down almost on their heads. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and that was one of the oddest, I think, yeah. we've been to. We made mention that, you know, it'd be really nice if they were, if the players <laughs> were like uh, uh, water, water polo, polo players. And had, had their numbers, numbers on, their number on top of yeah. their head. Yeah. You know, numbers on their head. That would have been helpful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you can be honest here. We won't share this with anyone. Okay. Okay. Any, any stadium you'd rather not go back to to call a game? Any, any stadium that, you know what, I didn't really enjoy calling a game there for whatever well, reason. That happened this year. Uh-oh. <laughs> Actually. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We've, had a, yeah. we've had a few places, and I, I think... Uh, is Power probably, outages aside, maybe. Yeah. Right. Uh, Northern Illinois is, is the worst single place. As far as, yeah, as the size very of small the booth. booth. We were crammed in. And yeah. Not a good view. Um, now, I'm one of those. I if If I never... Had to do a game. I was gonna. Sorry about this, but if if I never had to do a game at Colorado State again, I'd be fine. <laughs> um, got a you brand know, new we, stadium down the yeah, road here. We did a. Come we on. did a. Uh, which has a, a giant. You know, our our booth has a number of big posts oh, right geez. there. Well, we have to do this and at the new CSU stadium. So, but uh, I I never enjoyed doing games at BYU very much. Uh, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, the, for other reasons, I mean, it's for the you know just the surroundings and the 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 way the fans can be. And uh, but speaking uh, of giant posts, this question has always been on my mind. When Alan Edwards was coaching at Wyoming, he came and sat in front of you guys. <laughs> How in the heck did you call a game when he's sitting right in front of you? How? It's frustrating. How did you do that? I don't know how you did it. It was difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever, like, want to, come on, coach? Or did you? Uh, uh, would like to. Have, yes. <laughs> would I like to? Sure. Um, but, you know, as far as doing basketball now, uh, I have, for 36 years, always broadcast right next to our bench. Yep. You know, we're, when we were on the other side before the renovations, mm -hmm. uh, we were right next to the bench. And I just think that's where uh, a basketball play-by-play -play guy should be. And now uh, there were times when maybe it'd get a little too noisy on their bench, or maybe there were some things being screamed and yelled and said that it came out over our air Somebody where we'd have to- have a mute button somewhere? Yeah, yes, yeah. that happened occasionally. But I still think that's where you know a guy needs to be to to do the game correctly. When you know we, the, our players when they report to come and they go right in front of us, so you, that helps. But uh, yeah, there's been some times where we've had to do the old. Oh my know, gosh! I've had to stand up, you know, to to see. Yeah, yeah, there were. You probably didn't get a um, call a game in the old field house, Dave. Did you? That did would, not. Yeah, you did, did though, Kevin. And. Um, I've got to tell you as a fan, and I'll be criticized for this, but I almost enjoyed watching games in the field mm -hmm. house more than the beautiful arena auditorium. And I remember the Cowgirls would play oftentimes right before the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And you had to go, you had to sit down, and if you left, that was it. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you, you didn't get to keep your seat. You were closer, they built the old court right on the dirt there. And I really enjoyed watching the Cowboys play there. Yeah. Did you enjoy it too? Oh, yeah. In fact, I would say the same thing. I, I always felt it was the best home court advantage of all the places I've ever been. And when we played our last game, which was UTEP, UTEP. Oh, and we lost. We did. That was one of the biggest downers uh, I've had here because I wanted to win that last game in the field house. You know, Brandenburg had mm -hmm. won some uh, big games oh. there and won some championships there. and. Uh, but I go way back to when I was a kid. I, my, my first game in the field house was like 57 or 58. I went with my dad. And, and you know, I was used to Story Gymnasium, which was quite a gymnasium in, in, sure. back in the day in, in Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. And I got to go to the field house for the first time. I, I, I'll even never, never forget that. The Cowboys were playing Michigan State, which 
I didn't know a whole lot about uh, that they were from the Big Ten or anything, but it just felt so big time to me. And uh, to see us leave, we had a beautiful new arena and it was going to be great and all that, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave that place. The best cowboy game I ever heard on radio, Dave, was um, July or excuse me, January twenty eighth of twenty or two thousand two. And the reason I think it was the best game was the longest game ever played in Air Force Academy history. And I think it may have been the longest game ever played in Wyoming's history. And what I remember is your final call, the score, oh, the score <laughs> in four overtimes. Yeah. First of all, I'm sure you remember the game. Do. What's the genesis of the score, oh, the score? Mm. Uh, that's a that's a great question. I and I'm I'm the first to admit I'm sure somewhere when I was uh, probably heard the I might might have even heard that. But um, I don't know. Growing up, my mother used to say something. Oh, something, you know, just to <laughs> accentuate. Uh, so uh, it actually that actually came out. I didn't even I didn't even know I was saying it more or less. Uh, way back when, I was doing high school football games in Brawley, California, and I said it, and I, I remember saying it just like the, the first time I ever uh, said the Armani of analysis. You know, I, it just came out, <laughs> and I, I, I awesome. asked, uh, we get to the break after I said it, and I it was kind of, you know, you, when you're, when you're, and it's all live and it's going on, you, you kind of just, as a play-by-play -play guy, and as a, you, I mean, you describe or you say things, and, uh, but uh, I had mentioned, you know, in the Armani of analysis, Kevin McKinney, and I kind of paused after I said it, and then he went on talk. We get to the commercial break, and I had leaned over and I, I said, "Is that okay?" That I said that, you know. Um, so uh, as far as the score of the score, uh, it just came out way back when, and uh, I was kind of half embarrassed by it, and I. Uh, I didn't even think about it much, but then the next day, I get uh, calls and people call me and say, that was, uh, where did you, that was, I said, I, I don't know. Uh, but it only comes out, uh, obviously, a cowboy win, mm -hmm. uh, only after victories. And uh, it's something that uh, people have come up to me and said, don't you ever stop saying that. Oh, don't you don't. ever stop saying that. So, uh, and I thought about it. That's kind of silly, you know, it's kind of a silly oh, phrase, awesome. but. When that's your you, listeners Dave. like yeah. it, you know, and yep. I like saying it, uh, that's going to continue. Sure. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> Kevin, I want to ask you about the best Cowboy basketball game I ever saw, but it was on television, so I wasn't at it. But I bet you were. Give you some hints and see if you can. BYU? Yes. Okay. There were more, there were more friends of mine in my dorm room than <laughs> points that leading scorer Dwight McClendon had in the game, which was 10. <laughs> the final score of the game was 27-25. There were 22,000 people watching the game in the Marriott Center. It doesn't hold that many people anymore. The greatest basketball game. Every possession mattered. There wasn't a shot clock. It right. wasn't a three-point line. Everybody says, well, that must have been about the most boring game there ever was, and it wasn't by any means. Do you remember that game? Oh, I do. I do. Now, was that the one that the Cowboys win to host the tournament here? No, it was earlier was on earlier in the season. That? that was later in okay. the year. Great game, uh, too. I, I remember the, the, the low score and the fact that, uh, you know, no shot clock. We had several of those because we'd play Haskins, and he would play it the same way. But that's not what they were used to in the Marriott Center, and that's what we really weren't used to. But that's uh, how Jim felt he could attack them. And, and uh, uh, it's always great to leave there. We've said this for years, to leave that place with a victory. I don't care what it's in, but to, to leave there w with a, a win like that, that wasn't my best BYU game. But was it the Danny Ainge game? Yeah, and then, that then, was my then best. two days later with Utah, yeah. they were both nationally ranked at the time. Yeah. The thing that I remember about the Danny Ainge game with BYU is he blew the layup yeah. at the end of the game, which he made against Notre Dame in the tournament just a couple weeks yeah. later. Are we on the same page? We are, and, and he also missed a free throw. He was like a 94% free throw shooter, never missed, and he missed free throws that uh, helped us in that game. But that would be that one and the Utah championship game in the AA that we did, uh, that Wyoming won that yep. game. 
Uh, interestingly, most of those greatest games we won. I don't know how that works, but it works for us, though, <laughs> right? It does work yeah. for us. But um, that double overtime in the field house against BYU um, was just one of the greatest games I think I've ever seen. And then, as you say, we beat Utah on Saturday. Uh, so to sweep that series, that was a great uh, era of Cowboy basketball. It, it really was. You know, I came over that morning to get in line. It was just over after 6 o'clock um, to get in line for tickets. And that was common back then. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get into maybe some present-day conversations about what's, what's going on in, in, in college sports, um, Dave and Kevin. And, and, you know, it was a big deal to be able to go to a college basketball game then because you, you had, had to earn your way into the field house in those years. And now in the AA, it's a large place, and attendance is kind of waning just a little bit, and there's a lot of things that are influencing that. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about, um, you know, maybe the, and it's not just in Wyoming, but I don't know that middle schoolers in Wyoming appreciate the Cowboys like I did, like you did mm -hmm. growing up. Um, I'm worried about that. Yeah, and, you know, and we talk about that all the time in the athletics department uh, because the students don't come to the games, uh, in, in, especially in basketball, uh, like they used to. Um, and, and I think th there are many factors. One is we haven't been great, for one thing. Um, when, when we were really rolling with Brandenburg, they were here, and, and even in the AA. Uh, but they have so many other things they, 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 ha they, they can do. And, you know, we always say, well, they can't walk from the dorms over to watch a live game. They'd rather do a, a call of whatever it is and, and all that kind of stuff. I think that's what they do do. And, uh, you know, as far as the younger kids, they have their own events. They're in soccer. They're in uh, the youth everything, uh, which is great. But when I was growing up, maybe when you were growing up, we didn't have much else to do. Uh, yeah. we, we didn't have uh, organized uh, leagues and, and teams and games. Uh, we had Little League Baseball when yeah. I was growing up, yeah. and that was in the summertime. The rest of the year... School sports. We, yeah, school sports, that's all we had. And so uh, we looked forward to the games. I always came over with my dad, so I was very fortunate there. But a lot of my friends did. They came with their parents, and, and that's what we did. And they have a lot of outside influences nowadays that uh, draws them away from us. Well, I know, Kevin, I've read that one of your most favorite games in, in history is when Arizona State was here in the early 70s. It's the first game I ever saw. My folks brought me down. We sat right over there directly across from where we're sitting today. I'll never forget it. And um, I'll never forget any of the games. The, the first night game. Oh, yeah. Cool. Against BYU. Yeah. My wife and I drove down here from Laramie. We were part of that. The snow game when uh, Wyoming was down 14 nothing, and Phil Davis was a quarterback. And it started to snow, and that was the end of that for BYU <laughs> that day. Yeah. And, and there's just been all the history that's here, and, and I'm right there with you. There's no better place to be than, than right here or right over there when the Cowboys are playing, yeah. in my mind. And <clears throat> Wyoming has not been shortchanged in the broadcast booth mm. over the years. <laughs> and to both of you, I want to thank you for appearing with me on Wyoming Chronicle. Hope you're here for a long, long time. And the day I leave this, this good green earth, I um, hope that it was just like my mother, who was listening to you two on her oh. last day. Oh, so, wow. So thank you very Jeez. much for joining us on Wyoming Chronicle. Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Yep. You know, we, we look at this as a great honor to do the games. and, and uh, that we never take that lightly. Yep. So we appreciate it. Funding for this program is made possible in part by the Wyoming Humanities Council, helping Wyoming take a closer look at life through the humanities. Thinkwhy.org and by the members of the Wyoming PBS Foundation. Thank you for your support.